The story of how Tony Stark proposes to Emma Frost begins in the Polunsky unit, one of the United States' harshest prisons. One of the inmates, James Rhodes. Rhodey, the former war machine, gets a call on a guard's phone. Oh, thank God. Meanwhile, Tony Stark is at a party for the Hellfire Club, doing what he does, chatting up pretty girls. A waiter comes over with a cell phone on a silver platter. When Tony answers, he's pleasantly surprised to find Rhodey on the other line. Tony excuses himself, asking how his old friend has been holding up in prison. But Rhodey doesn't have time to chat. He's paranoid that a call on a cell phone will be used against him somehow. What do you want to talk about? Uh, you called me, Rhodes, right? Someone's pulling the strings here, connecting these two calls. As Tony hears inmates approaching Rhodey, he knows exactly who it was. He looks over to see Fei Long, the man who falsely sent Rhodey to prison. Fei Long is a mutant-hating villain who's recently used Stark tech to create sentinels to hunt down mutants. But he's also a smooth talker, hiding under the radar. Fei Long waltzed his way into the Hellfire Club and set up this phone call so Tony could listen to his friend get beaten to death. Tony quickly tells Rhodey his life is in danger. He needs to hang up and get ready for a fight. Rhodey is always ready for a fight. As soon as an inmate gets too close, Rhodes headbutts him and begins to fight them off, but he's outmatched, and they have knives. Tony marches toward Fei Long, cockily sipping his drink. Tony was ready to tear this guy apart, but Fei Long was saved by an unlikely face. A word, Mr. Stark. Wilson Fisk, kingpin of crime and enemy to basically every hero, steps in Tony's way. After marrying a mutant and joining the Hellfire Club, Kingpin's been seen as a bit of an ally recently. But now, he's just in Tony's way. Kingpin reminds Tony that the arrangements made to protect Rhodey in prison were put in place a few days ago. At that moment, the arrangements reveal themselves. The sand starts swirling around Rhodey in the prison yard, choking the attacking inmates. Suddenly, a giant hand crashes through the ground. It's Sandman, sent to the prison to protect Rhodey. Sometimes it pays to have friends with criminal contacts. An inmate gets away from Sandman, headed toward Rhodey with a knife, but a strong hand catches his wrist. I think not. It's the living laser. He breaks the inmate's hand, telling the goon to back off. Living laser helps Rhodey to his feet, letting him know that their employer hired them to protect Rhodes until he gets out of prison. Really, the hardest part of this gig was getting to Texas fast enough to get arrested. Then he found a cop, punched him. Easy work, really. Rhodey picks the phone back up. Tony breathes a sigh of relief that this little contingency worked. Fei Long curses, but no matter. He's still got a few tricks up his sleeve. As Rhodey goes back to his jail cell, he thanks Living Laser, happy that Tony sprung for a criminal as backup. Living Laser laughs. Even Tony Stark can't afford his day rate. No, this generosity came from Wilson Fisk. Fisk grabs a drink, equally happy their little plan worked out. But he wonders, do they really need to keep Fei Long alive? Tony insists they do. What's inside his head can end this war. Anyway, Emma Frost has called first dibs on killing Fei Long. Get in line, Fisk. Emma's been incognito recently. It's been dangerous being a mutant. She covered up her famous blonde hair, threw on a few more layers of clothes, and goes by the name Hazel. But when Emma spots Fei Long at the party, she's ready to risk it all to kill the mutant-hating scum. Tony quickly steps in her way. Tony leads her into a side room. If they kill Fei Long, his information is gone. Emma's also wearing an inhibitor ring, keeping her powers at bay but hiding her mutant scent from the Sentinels. If she takes that ring off, Sentinels will instantly show up at their front door. Get out of my way or I'll make you! Tony doesn't budge, so she knees him right between the legs. Tony collapses to the floor. Emma drops the ring, telling him to suit up. In 30 seconds, Fei Long's brain will be a pile of mush. A minute later, Sentinels will show up. It might get messy. Tony painstakingly crawls to her, explaining that he doesn't know if he can defeat the Sentinels. Fei Long's altered them, giving them different types of defenses. That's the information he needs from Fei Long. He needs to know what modifications he made. If Emma Frost kills him, they have no hope against the army of robots. He begs her for more time, handing her the ring. At that moment, Fei Long busts through the door. What the hell are you doing, Stark? Marrying the help? While Fei Long watches what looks a lot like a proposal, Emma and Tony have a telepathic chat before she slips the ring back on. She agrees to go along with the proposal ruse, so long as this story ends with them avenging Fei Long's mutant victims. I promise to make all your dreams come true, babe. 
Tony slips the ring on her finger, and the happy new couple shares a passionate kiss. Apparently, both of these two are really good at faking romantic attraction. Years of practice. Tony heads back to the party to chat up Fei Long. Fei Long's recently taken over as Stark Industries CEO, and Tony is recently broke. So the conversation is tense. The conversation turns back to Stark's new fiance. Am I invited? Tony calculates his answer. If he invites him, Fei Long obviously won't show up. The best way to get Fei Long there is to say, no. Before Tony walks away, he offers a warning. He's smart enough not to threaten Fei Long, but he reminds him that mutants are powerful. And right now, they are mad. Tony knows that Fei Long has many, many different ways to win this war. Stark and the mutants only have one. Tony needs Fei Long to take the bait for the sake of mutant kind. Tony and Emma, or Hazel as everyone thinks, pose for pictures. Tony's having a grand old time. Emma, not so much. I've just realized, I died with everyone else at the gala and now I reside in hell. It's the only explanation. A man congratulates Emma, calling her Mrs. Stark. That thought alone gives Emma anxiety. When asked about when the nuptials will take place, Tony says to pack their bags. They're leaving tonight for Las Vegas. The soon-to-be-married couple soar down the highway, headed for the nearest quick marriage chapel. He better show up if we're actually going through with this. Tony reminds Emma that technically, he'll be the only one married. Hazel Kendall is a figment of their imagination. She's not real. Tony notices a necklace, a large X for the X-Men. He reminds her to make sure to take it off before they're seen in public. That night, they did the regular pre-wedding activities. A nice dinner where prying eyes could take pictures. Dancing by the moonlight, all the romancing. That night, the clothes came off and the armor came on. Don't wait up, darling. I've got a busy night. The night before his wedding, Tony soars off into the night, wearing his new Mark Nil armor. It's great for sneaking around, ideal for when he's publicly retired from hero work as he is now. But it's not nearly powerful enough for the upcoming fight. Tony breaks into the secret laboratory of Zeke Stain, son of the classic Iron Man villain. Iron Man wasted the sentry drones and robbed Stain blind. And then he found it. The reason they chose the Vegas destination. This machine designed to build other machines just what he needs for the upcoming fight. A truck backs into the facility, ready to make off with the machine. Tony had his reservations, but Steve Rogers personally vouched for the driver, Deadpool. But that's a story for another time. The next morning, Tony throws on his classiest blood red suit and heads to the chapel, the gamble of love. Considering this was the first time, and probably the only time Tony was about to walk down the aisle, he thinks it's odd that he's not nervous. That is, until he sees her. Emma stands at the altar, donned in a fabulous red dress to match his. She's always been smart, she's courageous, she's a hero, she's witty. But now, she is beautiful. It doesn't take a futurist like Tony to know this woman is about to break his heart. You look surprised. Tony gathers himself, blowing off the comment with a quick joke. He checks his watch. Fei Long still hasn't shown. Emma wonders what happens if the man of the hour never shows up, or worse, if he comes with backup. If that happens, they do it the hard way. Tony tells Emma how beautiful she looks. She knows. I know you said this was a private affair, but I couldn't help myself. Right on time. The officiant puts everyone in place while Fei Long sits as the sole witness. Emma slowly slides off the ring, ensnaring everyone in her psychic web. First step, put the officiant to sleep. Second step, slip into the mind of the man who had been killing her people. Subtlety isn't a strong suit for either of these two. In the psychic realm, Tony's dressed in his Mark I armor. Emma is in her full white queen lingerie. Emma walks toward Fei Long's subconsciousness and downloads everything he has on the Sentinels. A lot of sick stuff in there. But Fei Long's mind is strong. A lot of high-ranking businessmen have developed guards against telepathy. He starts to fight back. Tony and Fei Long's consciousness fight for control as Emma races to get that info. A strong psychic barrier is no match for a master of telepathy like Emma Frost. She sets him back to sleep, telling him to forget this little encounter ever existed. She's got what she needed. They know how to defeat the Sentinels. But she's curious. Who is this pathetic man, and why does he hate mutants? She takes a look under the hood. What Tony and Emma sees shocks them. 
His parents were mutants. Feilong was born without any powers. For that, he resented them. Feilong tells everyone that he was abandoned by his parents. It's the exact opposite. His parents loved him for what he was, but he hated them for what he was not. It's time to go. Tony's got everything he needs from Fei Long, his life in Emma's hands. But after what she just saw, she can't. She's a hero after all. They'll win this war the way heroes do, and that doesn't include cold-blooded murder. Back in the physical world, the officiant says those magical words. Tony Stark and Hazel Kendall, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Congratulations! Of course, they had to keep up this little charade for Fei Long's sake, but Tony definitely seems to enjoy it. They won the battle, ready to upgrade and win the war. But right now, these two are officially married, and Tony's not upset.